Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are the crimes across the five boroughs. We begin in Park Slope, Brooklyn, where mass thieves made off with up to $2 million in jewelry in a quick smash and grab robbery at a high end boutique. It was under a minute of terror here at this fine jewelry shop in Park Slope as a three man robbery crew smashed their way to grab more than $1 million in jewelry. The terrified owner says she's now planning security enhancements and asking for more police patrols. In the surveillance video from the Facets Jewelry Store on 7th Avenue in Park Slope, you see one suspect casually look at his phone as he lets in two other people. One pulls out a hammer, yelling, this is how you use a hammer, and proceeds to smash the display case, while another holds open a large bag as they loot the gems. Owner Irina Soule says they threatened to shoot her and her workers if they moved. He started smashing the glass. Um, it was very scary. Very scary because I had no idea what was coming next. Soule tells me the store, which has been at this location for more than 20 years, specializes in heirloom one of a kind pieces. They were in and out in about 38 seconds, according to surveillance video, she says. They got away with an estimated one to two million dollars in engagement rings and other fine jewelry and gems. The guys looked over and said, What are you doing? Don't move. We're going to shoot. Don't move. They cleaned three cases out and walked out. As a woman business owner, Soule says she designed the luxurious shop to reflect her own creativity and sense of beauty. Her taste is reflected in the tiniest details, just like the jewelry she sells. But now full-time security and heavy double doors with a buzzer system may be a necessary addition to the ambiance. This could have been worse. They could have put us all on the floor. They could have used the hammers to hurt us. I need to get back home to my kids, you know, so I'm just grateful that no one got hurt. NYPD crime statistics show that robberies and grand larcenies were a big part of last year's 22 percent rise in overall crime. A property owner here tells us that several other businesses on this block have all been robbed within the last six months. The NYPD tells us that about the jewelry store heist they're investigating and there are no arrests yet. We now go to Jackson Heights, Queens, where an Asian grandmother was fatally struck with a rock repeatedly in a random attack. A man from Brooklyn has been sentenced in this assault. Elisal Perez admitted to the crime last month in Queens Supreme Court. Officials say back in November of 2021, Mr. Perez hit this woman, uh, Guaying Ma, in the head with a rock. He did it repeatedly. She's 61 years old. She was sweeping the sidewalk in her neighborhood in Corona. She was in a coma for months. She has since died. Down in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, four men robbed an internet cafe along with the customers. Police are searching for four men they say robbed an internet cafe in Brooklyn. It happened just after two o'clock yesterday morning on 59th Street in Sunset Park. Investigators say one suspect had a gun and another one had a knife. Police say they took $200,000 in cash from the register. They also got away with five iPhones from people inside the cafe. No arrests have been made. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. That number, 800-577-TIPS. Over in South Ozone Park in Queens, the NYPD is looking for the suspects who shot two men and critically injured a third while attempting to escape in a vehicle. Investigators say two men in a white BMW opened fire in front of the Impulse Lounge in South Ozone Park. This was just before four o'clock this morning and they sped down Liberty Avenue. During that speeding, their vehicle crashed into a third victim before they ran off. The shooting victims are in stable condition. The one that was hit by the driver is in critical condition and being treated for severe leg injuries. Now we go to the Bushwick section of Brooklyn where a 13-year-old girl walked onto an MTA bus in the middle of the afternoon to a jarring scene. The girl boarded a Q58 MTA bus and went to sit at the back. The girl then noticed that a man and woman who were sitting in the seats across from her were performing a sex act in public view. The couple got off the bus at the Palmetto Street and Wickoff Avenue stop. The New York City Police Department is asking for the public's assistance in identifying the couple to face public lewdness charges. The man is described as having a light complexion, medium build, brown hair, and facial hair. He was last seen wearing a black winter jacket with a hood and black pants. The woman is described as having a light complexion, medium build, and black hair. She was last seen wearing a black face mask, a black jacket, and black and white striped shirt, 
blue pants, and carrying a brown handbag and a yellow scarf. Anyone with information in regard to this incident is asked to call the NYPD's Crime Stoppers hotline at 1-800-577-TIPS. Over in Central Park, an anti-Semitic attack left a 63-year-old man with a chipped tooth and a broken hand. The New York City Police Department has identified a suspect in that attack. The Anti-Defamation League is offering a $7,500 reward for any information that would lead to an arrest in an attack in Central Park. Police releasing a photo of the suspect and identifying him as 32-year-old Perrin Jacob Chuck. They say a Jewish man was walking near East Drive last month when he was ambushed from behind and pushed to the ground. They say the suspect also made anti-Semitic remarks. Anyone with information is being asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-577-TIPS. In Fort Greene, Brooklyn, the NYPD's Hate Crimes Task Force is investigating an alleged racist attack. Police say on Saturday, December 3rd, this man walked up to the victim near Fleet Place and Willoughby Street in Fort Greene. This was around 4 in the afternoon. He made derogatory anti-Asian statements and threatened to kill the victim. He then allegedly hit the man in the head with an umbrella before taking off. The victim was not badly injured, but if you can help police identify the suspect, they ask that you contact them. And finally, we end in Jackson Heights, Queens, where the owner of several grocery stores shares security footage of a man store workers have dubbed the Skirt Steak Bandit because of his repeated thefts. This is one of many examples of brazen shoplifting that is plaguing the city. Stores really can't catch a break here, including this food town in Jackson Heights. The store owner telling me oftentimes it's the same shoplifter coming, returning to the store and continuing to steal. And at times they just don't know how to intervene when police is not around. They definitely just don't want to put their customers and also their employees in harm's way. It's something we see far too often. Videos of brazen criminals stealing and clearing out shelves, then walking out the store with little to no consequences. This video was posted on Twitter by actor and comedian Michael Rappaport on the Upper East Side. The video going viral and drawing attention to the nationwide problem. Back in my right aid, and there's nothing to steal because this right aid like so many other Rite Aids, is closing down because everybody stole everything. And the workers here don't know if they're getting jobs. An issue that small business owners have been expressing outrage over. Jason Ferreira runs three Food Town grocery stores in Queens. This is security footage from one of his stores of someone they've dubbed the Skirt Steak Bandit. You see the man grab steaks and then walk out the store without paying. They're just brazen and they say, uh, you, you caught me today, but you're not going to catch me ne next time. They have no shame about it. They're just, they know there's no consequence or they, or they have the perception that there's no consequence. In a crime briefing last week, the NYPD stated that shoplifting remains one of the top quality of life issues in the city, adding that most shoplifters are repeat offenders. We arrested 327 people, 327 people that account for 30 percent of all the arrests Half of them, or almost half, are convicted felons. And guess what? 235 of them, so 235 out of 327 are walking around the streets of New York right now, guess doing what? Unfortunately, making stores close. Which is why members of the National Supermarket Association and other grocery store owners have formed a group called Collective Action to Protect Our Stores. They are calling on lawmakers to create stiffer penalties for shoplifters. Bail reform for once. A, a, a lot of people out on bail who should really be behind bars. And that if somebody is, is shoplifting on a continuous basis, there should be a, a, a law that says, you know, one, two, three strikes, you're out. And to give a little bit more context here and look at it from a wider perspective, the National Retail Federation reporting that stores lose about $100 billion a year due to shoplifting. That's this week's Crime in the City.